owning your own home is about far more than building equity and wealth. It's about the stability and security of having a place to call your own and the feeling of belonging in a community that reinforces that. Being a homeowner makes me feel more stable and secure in my community um, because I feel like I'm a part of the community that I'm in, I'm going to be there, as opposed to just renting where you feel like you're just only there for a short time. It's the American dream. It's always been a part of the very blood and sinew of our being American. It's who we are. Having that American dream, having the piece of the pie, that is the American dream. Home ownership is very important for all of us. Children of homeowners tend to do better in school. Even health outcomes tend to be better for homeowners and their families. They stay in the school, the teachers are, are more familiar with what they do. And, and not only that though, I think that what you also find is that these kids tend to be more engaged themselves um, in, in the communities. They, you know, they're doing the act, sporting activities and, and things that are associated with that. Where you raise your family is very, uh, is super important because it's determinative of the success of more than nine times out of ten of how your children are going to end up because of where your schools are, the, the opportunities for the park districts in your community, um, the, the well-being of, of knowing that there's a, a rock in your life that is there for, for any time there's problems you know you can come back to this, your sanctity of your home. And that's very important for children, especially in this day and age when life can be so crazy, your home is your rock. And that's where you get to, to go and, and help build who you are. But the American dream of home ownership isn't the same for younger generations as it's been for prior generations. After the real estate bubble burst, the pursuit of home ownership in America waned. Some younger folks are living with their parents longer. Others are paying increasingly higher amounts of rent and numerous other costs, including medical and college tuition, have outpaced wage growth. Of about 54 million millennials in today's workforce, about 70% have student loan debt. Average student loan debt exceeds five figures. And Americans are poor savers, which can be a problem when it comes to home down payments. Without real income growth, our nation's younger individuals and families struggle to afford homes. What we're doing in New York State is we have proposed legislation uh, to have a first-time home buyer savings program. The program basically is a single person can put $5,000 into a savings account, a married couple can put $10,000 into a savings account tax-free, the interest is tax-free, and that money is geared specifically to go towards the down payment and the closing costs on a first-time home. NAR is working on the policies to make uh, home ownership affordable and first-time home ownership affordable for all homeowners throughout the United States. So they will not pay taxes on that savings account. Anecdotally, I've heard that some folks don't uh, realize that you don't always have to have 20% down in order to purchase a home. So there are some myths that can be cleared up. You can also restructure debt and uh, there are programs available to um, millennials or anyone who is saddled with uh, student debt or other types of debt that can be advantageous for them. So consulting a realtor is a really good first step. The challenges that millennials face in buying a home in today's market is financial. The biggest thing being that they're coming out of college with a lot of student loan debt. They also may have trouble finding a job. Um, once they do have a job, the pay may be lower. But again, the biggest thing is student loan debt, finding money for a down payment, closing costs, all of those things. I mean, they're looking at 10% before getting into a home. The first thing is just having the money. The second one, uh, one of the other primary things is, is having the credit, you know, the cre credit worthiness. Um, uh, a lot of the, um, the young people, or so let's say many of them, they, they may not be aware of how important credit worthiness is. And so when they go to try to apply for a loan, they find they, 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 um, they don't qualify or they have some things that they need to correct. And so we, we've we developed programs um, locally where we can assist them if they need to, to get them back into their credit where, if they're in that situation. How soon will home ownership rates recover? It depends on job and income growth and mortgage credit availability and affordability and more. Clearly, there are times for most folks when it makes more sense to rent than own, based on things like income or even marital status. But given the many benefits homeownership provides for our nation's families, communities, and economy,
ensuring policies that facilitate sustainable home ownership should remain at the core of our nation's housing policy agenda. That includes access to affordable mortgage loans for those who qualify and assuring an adequate supply of affordable homes. You can check out the NAR Home Ownership Rate Reports and tell us what you think about America's struggling home ownership rates or email your questions to ask the expert at sherryolifson.com.